Now, if you're thinking of buying Waves Factory track spacer but already have Ableton Live Suite, you might want to try this little trick out first. Chances are, if you're already watching this video, you know what track spacer is already. But if you don't, it's basically a plugin that you put on a track and it will duck the frequencies of that track by the frequencies of another track, basically making room for another track to punch through the mix. However, there is a little trick within Ableton Suite that'll allow you to do a very similar kind of thing. But first, let me show you how how track spacer works just so we can kind of see how we're replicating a similar kind of effect. So I've got a very simple beat going on here. I've got some drums, a piano and a vocal. Now the vocal and the piano are taking up very similar frequencies and I want that vocal to punch through a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Track Spacer. Now I own and love Track Spacer, I use it a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop Track Spacer onto the piano track. I'm gonna to go to the sidechain input of Track Spacer and I'm gonna choose vocal. Now when I increase this amount knob, it will start to duck the frequencies of the piano based on the frequencies by the vocal. You can see in the analyzer, the blue line is the vocal and then the white line is what track spacer is doing to that piano. It's kind of cutting those frequencies based on the frequencies of the piano. Now, I'm not saying we can replicate this plugin completely, but we can get a very similar kind of effect based on one plugin within Ableton. If I go to the audio effects section, we have an effect in here called envelope follower. I'm gonna drag and drop this and put this onto the vocal. And in fact, I'm gonna put this on at the start of the chain. Now what this does is it follows the incoming audio signal and creates this line that follows the waveform of the audio coming in. And this line is basically drawn based on the volume of the incoming signal. So you can see that yellow line there is following the waveform of that audio signal that's coming in, that vocal that is singing. And the louder the vocal is, the taller that yellow line becomes. Now we can actually map that yellow line to something else within Ableton. And what we're basically going to do is we're going to duck a certain frequency by how loud that vocal is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the map button within the envelope follower. And then I'm going to go to the piano track. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to map it to this third frequency here, for example, we want it to duck like that track spacer does. Now you can see the gain is going up and down here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to map it to this gain control. Now you can see it's already all the way down the bottom. That's because in the envelope follower, when it's at zero here, it's at zero percent. And when it's at the top, it's at a hundred percent. Now we want it to start off in the middle here. So we want it to start at 50%. This is actually 0% gain, but we have a minus 15 and a plus 15 gain here. So 50% would be dead in the middle. So I'm going to go into here and this is the start amount here. I'm going to change this to 50%. And if I go back into the piano track, you can now see that is correctly there. Now, if I play this back, you'll see it jump to the top. That's because in here we have it going from 50% at its lowest to 100% at its highest. Now we want it to be 0% at its lowest. We want it to go down instead of up. Now this is already working quite well. As you can see, it's really simple to set up, but what we can do is if we want it to go down further, we can increase the gain on here. Maybe that's a little bit too much. I'm gonna back off of that gain. We can also go into the EQ here and we can actually tweak the Q as well. So we can make it wider or thinner. We might want to, we might want to take away more frequency. We might want to take away less. Yeah. 
as you can see, it's really simple to set up and there's a few more things we can tweak within here. We have a rise and a fall. You can think of this as attack and release. So how quickly it kind of kicks in, how slowly it kind of releases afterwards. <laughs> You can see how it's reacting slower by increasing the rise and the fall makes it a little bit more subtle and it's not just eq we can actually do it on anything else for example i've got a utility on that track as well so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to get rid of that mapping there and i'm going to map it again i'm going to go back to the piano track and i'm going to do it on the gain instead As you can see there, it's acting more like a traditional kind of side chain. You can also map it to multiple things as well. It doesn't have to be just one control. By clicking on this button here, you can map it to up to eight different controls. So for example, we got that map to the gain. I could also map it to the EQ again. Now, if I go back to the envelope follower, you can see that we have different percentage values here. So again, I've got to make this 50, make this zero. And in fact, we can even go in here and change this gain so it doesn't go down as far as zero. We can make it go down to 20, for example. So you can see there, it's actually affecting the EQ8 and the utility at the same time. Now you're probably not going to do it on both. This is just an example of the fact that you can actually map it to multiple things. I'm going to get rid of that utility and just keep that EQ8 within there. And let's get rid of that mapping that we had before. I'm going to revert it back to the EQ mapping. In fact, setting it to 20% at its lowest actually has a more of a kind of subtle effect and that kind of works quite nicely. Now, of course, I'm not saying this is a direct replacement for Trackspacer. Trackspacer is an amazing plugin, one which I own and use a lot within my tracks. However, if you don't have Trackspacer and have Ableton Live Suite, then it's well worth trying this little trick out because the only limit is your imagination, really. You can map it to so many different things. And to be honest, even though I have Trackspacer, I do use this technique quite occasionally when I want to have something interesting, some interesting relationship between two different tracks. And I want to do something a little bit more outside of the box it's well worth playing around with because there are so many different combinations so many different things you can map it to so it's well worth just having a play around with and seeing how it works within your tracks right, 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 right now.